people are sitting in their homes at night watching TV. And suddenly, outside their window, something starts flying up in the air. What is this thing? Okay, it's a drone. And as they're peacefully watching their TV, very strange things start happening around them. So they start sending reviews to Yelp without their knowing. They start sending spam to their friends. Their printer starts printing out coupons for sites they never signed on to. All sorts of craziness is happening. And 12 minutes later, it all stops. The drone goes back again, and it's over. And nobody knows who did this. And nobody can find this attacker ever again. So what happened? What happened? Somebody thought that it would be a great idea to have your TV browse to the internet while you're watching TV. Sounds, which is, sounds like a good thing. Well, actually, it's a really nice idea. Because let's imagine we're watching a sports program. And somebody just scored a goal. And I really want to know about this person. So I take, take this remote, and I press a red button. And on the screen pops up lots of statistic information about this pe person or his uh, career. Yeah. Or let's say I'm hearing a song on a mu music channel. I want to buy this song. I press a red button. And boom, iTunes open up. I can buy this song. So this is called hybrid television. It's hybrid. It's both television and internet. And it's really nice. It's, it's been uh, launched in Europe, and people really love it. Mm -hmm. And who really loves it is advertisers, because uh. now they can send you ads over the internet. So instead of seeing everybody's ads, you just see the ads which are best for you. And advertisers really love right. knowing what you like and sending you the exact ad you're going to use. And things happen. The problem is that. Uh, just as Borat said when he offered, uh, when he proposed to Pamela Anderson, uh, consent is not required. <laughs> so this red button is just a matter of politeness. The right. thing is, as soon as you turn on your TV and browse to a TV channel with hybrid television, it can just start doing whatever it wants with your internet connection. So TV looks the same as you're watching it, programming is the yes. same, there's no like fuzziness or strange faces that come on the screen? No. The audio and video are exactly the same right. as usual. So how do you do it? How do you actually pull it off? How can, can anyone do this, or do you have to be a computer security researcher? You basically need $200 yeah. and a roof to and do a, this. And a, and a computer and software. Yes, yeah. yes. There's a $200 device that's about the size of a smartphone. You plug it in to your computer on one side right. and 10 on the other side. OK. And that's it? And what kind of, do you have to like know how to write software, or could, could I do it? Um, is it stuff you can download from off the internet there in Russia? There are open tool sources, right. but anybody who can write a normal television channel, who can write programming for a normal television channel, right. will be able to do these attacks. Right. And the problem is that you don't have to take anybody's permission. If, you would, if I were to set, let's say, a normal internet attack site, I would have to take a server and put it somewhere. I would have to register. I would have to get an IP address. I would have to get a domain name. So people will be able to track me. And for this attack, you don't need an IP address. You don't need a server. You just need a roof and an, an, uh, an antenna. And once you're done with your attack, there's completely no trace of you. Well, so I, what I don't get is, OK, so you take over their, computer, their, their TV signal, yes. and you're in their TV, yes. which is connected to the internet. But how does that get onto Facebook? How does the, you go from the TV to, their, to get their login credentials? Mm -hmm. if they're, let's say they're already logged in on their laptop across okay. the room. How does it jump from one to the other? If the user has already logged in to Twitter or Facebook with his TV, you can try and reuse these credentials. Right. Another thing you can do is try to hack like regular hacking, find a vulnerability in the TV or in the printer or in the router mm -hmm. or in the PC, mm -hmm. and then try to take advantage of that. And then whatever you could do with an uh, with a normal attack, you can do with this attack. Okay. And what kind of TV are we talking about? Is this the TVs that everyone has, the flat screens? With the smart TVs, with the apps on them, or? It's a TV which connects to the internet. And most of the houses with TVs and internet in the US today, yeah. the TV is also connected to the internet. Right. This thing is, this, this, this attack is, what, do you have a name for it yet? Like a? Yeah, it's called a red button attack. A red button attack. Because you press the red button to do okay. it.